Well, welcome. I am Mr. Murphy, and in this lesson, we're going to be looking at the second part of this lesson on transformations. Specifically in this lesson, we're going to start to combine some of the transformations that we saw in the previous video. So if you haven't had a chance to watch that, it's vital that you do so, so you understand what we're going to be talking about, what we're going to be doing in this lesson. So let's go ahead and get started with a warm-up. So I want you guys to see what you remember from the previous lesson. So why don't you go ahead and pause this video and uh, work out these different, uh, or describe in your own words, what's happening with these different transformations. And so why don't you guys go ahead and pause the video now and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you did it correctly. All right, did you get to dust off those cobwebs and remember what you did yesterday in the previous video? Well, let's check. And so for this first one, uh, where we have x plus 2 squared. Remember, any time that we have something happening directly with the x, we're going to do the opposite of what we would expect. And so we're not going to say it moves to the right two units. Remember, it's in the form of x minus h. Whatever h is, that's going to be how the graph is affected horizontally. And since it's x plus 2, that tells me that h is negative 2. Or we could just look at it as being, oh, the opposite of plus 2 would be minus 2, so it's going to be moving to the left two units. So that's how you would do the first one. Uh, secondly, we have 2 times x. Again, something happening directly with the x there. So remember, we do the opposite of what we would expect. And so this is referring to um, horizontally. Is it being stretched or compressed? Well, since it's bigger than 1, it's gonna, and it's happening directly with the x, so again, opposite of what you'd expect, it's going to be half the size of what we would have expected. It's compressed to be half the size. And lastly, with letter C, x squared minus 2. So that minus 2 is happening after we square the x. So that tells me that this is going to be affecting the graph vertically. It's going to be a vertical translation. So we're going to say it translates down or shifts down two units. So that's a little warm up there. All right, let's look at what happens when we start to combine some of these transformations. And this one, we're not dealing with a specific graph. We're just saying that we're taking this, or a specific equation rather, but we're going to take this graph that we have here and we're going to apply these two transformations. Now, if you notice, we have a negative f of our input, meaning that's going to flip the graph horizontally over the x-axis. Uh, then we have x plus 2. So that x plus 2, remember, means we're going to move it to the left two units. So let's go ahead and we're not going to do this all at once. Okay, that's the important thing. So let's do one thing at a time. So let's start with the x plus 2. I already gave it away. Uh, but how does that x plus 2 affect the graph? Again, like I said a minute ago, it's going to move to the graph to the left two units. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to take every single significant point. What do we mean by significant points? Well, if I read the graph from left to right, I see that we have a, a, a first point there of negative 4, 2. So I'm going to move that to the left two units. So that's going to be at negative 6, 2. And then it comes to kind of a peak there. And that peak is at negative 2, 4. So I'm going to move that to the left two units. Um, I can use that low point there in that valley where we have zero, uh, or negative one, three. I can move that point uh, two units to the left. And then we have a y-intercept at zero, five. I can move that to the left two units and so on. So we're just going to take some of the significant points and move them all to the left two units. And when we do that, we would get this graph here that's dotted or dashed there in green. So that's what it'll look like if we just move everything to the left two units. Well, now let's look at the other part. So how does the opposite of f of x affect the graph? Again, I already gave it away earlier, but that means it's going to flip the graph over the x-axis. So that point that was at negative 6, 2, it's still going to be where x is negative 6, but now we're going to flip it down, so it's going to be where x is negative 6, y is negative 2. Um, the very last point, the top right, where it's negative 1, positive 7, it's still going to be at negative 1, but instead of positive 7, we're going to flip it down to be at negative 7. And so when you graph each of those points, we would get our final graph there is the one that's graphed in red. So that's what the graph would look like after translating every point two units to the left and then flipping it over the x-axis. Let's try another one. This time we have the graph of y equals 1 half f of x plus 3. Again, we don't want to do all this at once. We're going to break it up into parts. Let's start with the 1 half f of x. Now remember, that's not happening directly with the x. It's happening after the fact. So this means that it's going to be a vertically, it's going to affect the graph vertically, so it's going to be compressed to be half the size vertically. 
So let's go ahead and start with that. So we're just going to, so the x values are going to stay the same, but the y values are going to be half of what they were. So for that first point, again, the far left point there, where we have negative 4, positive 2. The negative 4 is going to be the same, this is going to stay the same, but the y value, the 2, we're going to take half of it. So that would be at negative 4, positive 1. Or that, that uh, peak there, where x is negative 2, y is 4. The negative 2 part would stay the same, but the 4, we're going to take half of that, and now that would be at 2. Now some of those are going to be decimals, like that first value there at negative 1, 3. The x would stay the same at negative 1, but half of 3 is a 1.5. And so when you go to graph some of those points, again, they might be at decimals, and that's okay. We'll just estimate where those are at. So what's in green there? That green dashed line represents taking half of the y values. All right, now let's take into consideration the plus 3. So what is the f of x plus 3 piece? What does that do to the graph? hopefully recognize that that's going to move the graph up vertically. So it's going to move it up vertically three units. And so let's do that to each of the points. We're going to take that dashed line, just move every point up three units to get our final graph. And that's what the red line would represent. All right, it's your turn. Okay, this one's slightly different. I want you to take that graph that's shown, and I want you to apply the pieces, these two transformations, where we have 2 times each x value, and then we're going to do the minus 4. So let's think about what that 2 times x means. Remember, that's happening directly with the x. So remember what we learned about in the previous uh, video was that whatever happens directly with the x, we always do the opposite. So this is not going to be stretched horizontally to be twice the size. What's going to happen horizontally? Right, it's going to be shrunk. It's going to be compressed to be half the size of... Um, horizontally. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to take each x value and take half of it because that's the impact. Remember that um, when we have a number multiplied by x, we always take the reciprocal of it as another way to think of it. So that 2, the reciprocal of 2 is 1 half. So that's another idea. So it's going to be half the size horizontally. And then what does a minus 4 do? Well, I think you should be able to recognize that one, but think about that for a second. Hopefully you're thinking that the minus 4 is going to move it down 4 units. So why don't you guys, even though I kind of walked you through what you're going to have to do anyhow, why don't you guys go ahead and pause the video and hit play when you're ready to check to see if you graphed it correctly. All right. Ready to see how you did? So you should have, if you compressed it to be half the size, remember the x value there, the y is going to stay the same for where we have negative 4, 2. So the 2 is going to stay the same, but half of negative 4 is negative 2. And then if you move it down four units, so then the x we'd have at negative two, then we would move it down four units. Um, or that one peak there, where we have x being negative two. If you took half of that, we'd be at negative one. And again, later you would move it down four units and so on. So some of those you'd have decimals again, just like we had in the previous example, where x was uh, that first coordinate, there, or the far right coordinate there, where you have where x is one, y is seven. The y value would stay the same, but half of one would just be a half, it'd be 0.5. So you'd have 0.57, and then again, moving it down four units would end up where it was finally at. So hopefully you did well on that example where we're combining those transformations. Now, we're not always going to see transformations or, or functions written that way. Most of the times when we're dealing with um, graphs, we're going to be looking at specific equations like these. So what we're going to do is we're going to describe in words what's going to happen to each of these functions when we compare it to the parent function, which would be f of x equals x squared. So looking at that first one, again, we have two things going on there. So we have the negative out in front and the one-third inside the parentheses. So we can really describe it in any order, but let's start with the horizontally speaking. Uh, so the one-third, that's happening directly with the x. So take the reciprocal of it, which would be 3. So this would be 3 times the size horizontally. So it's going to be stretched out to be 3 times the size horizontally. And the negative out in front means it's going to be flipped over the x-axis, or it's a reflection over the x-axis is how we can describe it. Let's look at the other one. The other one we have in parentheses x minus 4 quantity squared and plus 5. This one's going to be a little easier because this we don't have anything multiplied, we're just translating. But remember, we always, anytime that we have something going on specifically with the x, we always do the opposite. So the x minus 4 not moving to the left 4 units. It is moving to the right 4 units. And so we'd say it's moving to the right or a translation of 4 units to the right and 5 units up. That's how you would do that one. All right, let's try, let's try these. So this one, it says, uh, what transformations are happening to the parent function, this time dealing with the absolute value of x? 
So looking at that first one, we have one half outside of the absolute value, and then we have x plus 3. So here's what that one half means. That one half means that it's going to be uh, affected horizontally, okay, because it's not happening specifically with the x. So we would say that it's going to be compressed horizontally by a factor of one half, or it's going to be compressed to be one half the size vertically. And the x plus 3, since that's happening specifically with the x, here we do the opposite with it, or the opposite of it. So we're going to say it moves to the left three units. So it's going to move to the left three units and going to be compressed to be half the size vertically. Okay, letter B, let's look at that example. Here we have the opposite, the opposite value of x plus 2. So what that means is that it's going to be two units up, and then that negative outside of there means that it's going to be, again, flipped over the x-axis. So that's how you do those two examples. All right, lastly, we're going to look at how we can come up with an equation from a graph. Now, sometimes it's going to be a little easier, sometimes it's going to be a little harder. Now, it says here... Uh, so it gives a description there. A scenic train makes a trip on an old mining ride line. The graph shows the distance y in kilometers of the train from the station x minutes after the ride begins. So x is representing your time. The y is representing the distance from the train station. So it's going to go to the mining station or the mining line. It's going to go to the destination and then come back again. So we want an equation. Our ultimate goal is to come up with an equation for that line. So let's think about a couple of things first. So first off, what do you notice about the graph when compared to the parent function? So how do you notice how has it changed? What are some things that you recognize? So hopefully you should recognize at least three things. You should recognize that it's been flipped vertically over the x-axis. You should recognize that it's moved, that vertex has moved to the right 15 units, and it's also moved up 15 units. But and so that, or let's start there. So it has been flipped over the x-axis and translated 15 units right and up 15 units. So we can come up with, for, for the time being, we can come up with a general equation. So looking something like this. And you might be saying, well, wait a minute. Why do we need that A there? Well, that A is going to represent how the graph might be compressed or shrunk at all. Okay, so we want to figure out, is there a value for A? Has it been stretched or shrunk? Now, you might be able to look at that and determine that, I really don't think it has. It looks like it's it's staying the same with having a slope of of um, of one basically um, if you're to keep it as a V I know it's been flipped so it's be a negative one on one side and positive one on the other but uh, so you might be recognized well the slope hasn't changed so the a value hasn't changed but maybe you don't know that let's figure out a way that you can determine that so what you're gonna do is you're just gonna start by picking any point on the graph any point so I'm going to pick the point that'd be easiest. So for me, it's going to be 0, 0. And we're going to plug it into that equation, that general equation that we have right now. And again, the reason why, if you're wondering why we have x minus 15, is remember it moved to the right 15 units. So it'd be x minus 15. It moved up 15 units, so it'd be up 15. And the minus is because it's flipped vertically. So right now, we're working on, is there a value for a? So if I put any coordinate, any coordinate from the line, I could use 15, 15. I could have used the point where x was 12, y was 12. I could use a point where x is 24, uh, y is 6. Any of these would work. I want to use something easy, though. I'm lazy. So I'm going to use 0, 0. So if I put 0 in there for x and 0 in there for y, this is what we would have. And now let's simplify the right side. If I take 0 minus 15, I get negative 15. But the absolute value of that is a positive 15. And negative a times 15 is negative 15a. OK, so that's all in one step. Now I'm going to subtract 15 from both sides. And then lastly, I could divide by negative 15, and I would get a is 1. So what does that tell us? That tells us that there is no stretch, there is no compression here, because our a value is 1. If a was 2, well, then we would just put 2 in the equation. Okay. Um, so that's all we got to do. So, our, so going back to the original question, what equation represents the distance from the station as a function of time? This would be your equation y equals negative absolute value of x minus 15 plus 15. So there you have it. Putting it all together, what we've learned now into this lesson, on to a couple of examples here that we've looked at in this video. So good luck now as you work on your homework assignment.